to those at home. We are in your packet. If you print your pack, packet, those here at school, um, we are um, today. We're going to do navigation in the purple uh, note sheet. Uh, keep in mind, next week is your test, so you'll be done with your purple packet kind of deal. Um, so next week's your test. Um, over the weekend, you were supposed to watch it. If you find that, that um, navigation vector application notes, multiple forces, you were supposed to watch a video on, uh, you were supposed to watch by about a 10 minute video about this um, over the weekend. If you didn't, make sure you do that because we're not presenting anything in class. These are fit. If you did, um, you should have gotten the answers of magnitude of 78.6 and the direction angle 37 or 33.79 degrees. We were just pushing a couple forces on something. What's going on? Okay, so there's a video on that. Okay. If you didn't get that done, make sure you do that. We are on the next page in your purple packet where it says navigation up top. If you flip it, it says navigation right up top, and there's kind of a whole blank spot before that first word problem. There's one word problem. Notice all the room for that one word problem. There's a reason for that. Just saying. Okay. Everyone find where we're at? I don't want to go too fast. We really only have three questions to go through today. Okay, just just to be totally, we, we, we got three things we're going after. Um, I'm going to do two with you, and then you guys are going to kind of do the third one, and we'll see. We'll talk a little bit about third one before we start, and then go after. Okay? All right. So with navigation, with navigation, we can measure the angles in two different ways. Okay. A bearing or a course, we're going to measure it from zero degrees north, and we're going to the right, we're going clockwise for the 90 degrees, the 180, and the 270. That's not the trig angle, that's not the angle that your calculator uses, so we have to make that adjustment if we're going to hit our calculator. Okay, we've got to be able to go back and forth between. Or the other way that we measure them is we measure them uh, from the north or south. Oops, I'm running out of room there. And then we got an east and the west. So those are the kind of two ways. Keep in mind that's the way the two ways we measure navigation angles, depending on what's happening. Okay. We are going to look at boats and planes. Okay. So with vectors, what we're going to do is if I'm flying, if I'm a pilot, not only do I have to aim in the right direction, but I got to take into consideration of the wind. Because the wind is going to blow me off course where I'm aiming. If I'm a boat, not only do I have to aim in the right direction, but I have to take into account the current, because it's going to push me off course. Does that make sense? So if I think about a plane, which we use lots of planes, but basically the same for the boat, except instead of for a plane we use wind, for a boat we use current kind of deal. If I'm aiming this direction, let's say I'm aiming there, okay, and let's say the wind is blowing this way kind of deal, what's my plane going to do? It's going to get pushed a little bit flatter, a little bit towards the 90 degrees, a little bit more towards the east. Okay. So uh, what's going to, my plane going to do is it's going to go on a course, on uh, a true course of something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So in vector terminology. What's going to happen is, hey, my pilot or my boat captain, it's going to aim. It has, they have to add in consideration the wind 
and that's going to be what the plane actually does. A lot of times you're going to see the word ground, or like ground speed. That's what happened if I'm looking at the plane from the ground, what the current plane is doing. Okay? Sometimes they use the word true course. That's another way to do it. But if I take my vectors, I take I'm aiming, I add the wind in, that's going to get me where I'm going. Does that all make sense? Okay? So I like to use the variables A plus W equals G. That's why I'm going to talk. So I have to write out aim and wind to ground to force to true or else. For a boat, it's going to be the same deal, except I'm going to be aiming, and instead of wind, I'm going to say current. Same deal, though. Okay? So if I think about a pilot, what does the pilot know? Well, the pilot knows or, or has instruments that measure the wind, and the pilot knows the direction, the grounds, the speed he wants to go in, and the, the direction where he wants to fly, where you're going on potential move constant to wherever Chicago, he knows what course he wants to go on. So he, he can't aim, like if he takes off from central Wisconsin, he can't aim right at O'Hare, the direction that he wants to go, because the wind's going to push him off direction. So he has to calculate, or she has to calculate, how we aim that. And that's what pilots do all the time. Actually, I can find what the computer does with the pilot. Some computer programmer, they program it into the pilot. Okay? But well, that's what's happening. Got it? All right, let's do the first one. I'll let you guys read it. All right, so a plane has an airspeed of 450 miles an hour on a bearing of 150. The wind is blowing with a bearing of 60 degrees at a velocity of 50 degrees, 50 miles per hour. What is the true course and ground speed of the plane? So we have to figure out what we're given. Okay, because we, we have that aim plus wind equals ground. Okay? So the first one, well, I, I guess this is the way. Sometimes I get confused whether I'm given the aim or given the ground. Well, in this case, it asks for what is the true course and ground speed. So it asks for the ground or the true course, the one I'll be equal to it. So I'm going to add my two vectors together. So I'm given what the pilot's aiming at, and the wind is pushing it off. that make sense? So, I usually draw three pictures for this, to be totally honest with you. Okay, I get three pictures going. First, I'm going to start with the aim. Okay, so I'm going to draw my first picture. Um, you guys can draw this in sketch. Some of you are going to be hard-headed in here, and you're not going to draw pictures, and your angles are going to be all off. Just to let you know. Some of you that draw your pictures, you're going to be much better off. Okay? So if you choose not to draw pictures, it makes it harder for you. Just to let you know. So it has an airspeed of 450 and a bearing of 150. Since it uses this word bearing, we're talking about coming from the north. That's where we're starting. And we're going this direction. So planes, they have that bearing there. All those angles are always measured from the north. So where's 150 degrees? Draw your vector. Hopefully you drew it somewhere down here. Because there's 150. When I add these two up, when I add the aim and wind, I guess I should have said this to begin with. Remember, when you add vectors together, you have to add them in component form. So we have to get the x and the y. we got to put this in component form, x kind of y, a kind of b form. So 
So that's kind of what my thought is right now when I'm doing this. So um, I got to figure out that calculator angle that I'm going to use. So what's my calculator? Well, the calculator angle, I want that angle, don't I? That's the angle that I need. That's what my calculator uses. And so that angle is what? 300? The way I did mine, I'm not sure how you got 300, but just to let you know the way I did mine, I saw this little angle between my vector and uh, the bottom y axis, that little angle right there, if that's a 150 to get to 180, that's got to be 30. And then I did 90, one quadrant, 180, two quadrants. I did 270 plus 30. That's how I got my 300. Not sure how you guys got it. I don't care how you got your 300, just get your 300. Just for those that didn't see how you got it, that's why I did mine. So now I'm going to have to get this in component 4. Well, how do I get A in component 4? I take the magnitude, which is the miles per hour, 450. That's how long my vector is. That's how much we're pushing with it. Well, not too fast for a plane, but for you to clip. Uh, 450 times the cosine of the angle. The angle I have to use is my trig angle, is my calculator angle. I have to use the 300 angle. Okay, make sure you grab that angle. So notice I'm not using the 150, but I got to use the 300, comma, 450, sine, 300. Then I'm going to take my calculator out, and I'm just going to hit that on my calculator. I'm going to go out a couple decimal places because I'm going to add, end up adding to this and then doing inverse tangent and all a bunch of things to it. So I want I want to round I want to go out a couple, maybe even a couple more. I don't know. I got 225 negative. Let me rephrase that. Lynn's got 225 negative 389.711. I'm just copying his answer. Is Lynn's accurate? I'm going to do the same thing similar, but now I'm going to deal with the wind. So I'm going to come over here. Let me get rid of that. I'm going to make my wind. Oops. I'm going to talk about the wind now. The wind. Now, you got to be careful with wind. I don't know if you realize this, but if you ever listen to meteorologists, when they talk about wind, they typically say the wind is blowing uh, from the north or from the west. So if the wind is blowing from the north, which way is it pushing? South. So you got to be really careful with the words that they use for wind. Because sometimes they say it's blowing from and you got to realize it's pushing the other direction. Other times they don't. Okay, so you got to be really careful when you read this. So when I read this wind, so now this says the wind is blowing with. Okay, so that's the blow. It's pushing with this bearing. Okay, so it's pushing in the direction of 60 degrees at a velocity of 50 miles an hour. Okay. So where's my angle? Well, it's blowing with a bearing of 60 degrees, so it's blowing in that direction. Okay, so here's the wind blowing in that direction. There's the 60 degrees here. What's my trig angle? 30. Everyone okay with that? we got to use 30 degrees on this. We always use that calculator. So 
same deal where we got a velocity of 50, cosine 30, 50. Grab my calculator. Now we have to go after what is the true course. We'll go blue. What is the true course and ground speed? So true course means the bearing. What direction are we going? And ground speed means the magnitude. How fast is this thing going? Okay. Well, in order to do that, I first have to add my two vectors together. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do is remember that the aim plus the wind, whoops, that's the right wind, aim plus the wind is equal to the ground speed. So that's what we're trying to do. So in this case, I'm just going to add that vector to that vector. I'm just adding those components together. Okay? And when I add those together, I'm getting 268.3013 comma negative 364.71. And I have a feeling you guys can hit the calculator when you add things, so I think you're okay. Now that we have component form of G, how can we get the magnitude? Pythagorean theorem. How can we get the bearing? Inverse tangent, right? Go. Your turn.
Did you guys get uh, 452.8 miles per hour? Okay. All right. I am not done when I do my inverse tangent and get that 53.7. Okay, if I ran from the nearest 10th there, I am not finished yet. Okay, because that's my calculator angle. So when I go after this, what I need to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw my third picture to figure out what my true course is, what my bearing is. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at my vector and component form. So the first place I'm looking, I'm looking at the ground in component form, and I'm thinking, what quadrant is that in? Oh, that's right and down. So I'm going to draw my true course or where, where I'm where the plane is traveling in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so that's what my plane is doing right now. And okay, this is the true course or the ground, however you want to call it. Oh, that's supposed to be an LS. That makes my life messier than usual. So the calculator gave me this 53.7 degree angle. So what angle is that? Well, that's that one right between the x-axis and the vector. That's the reference angle. That's that 53.7. What angle do we want? We want the bearing or the trig angle. We want the angle that goes from that zero degree vector all the way around. That's the one that we want. So what are we going to do? 90. That was bad. Not sure why I put the plus sign up there. Plus data front. That's the angle that we want. So 90 plus 53.7, that looks like 143.7. Okay. Questions? Take your time. Draw pictures. Because if you don't have the correct angle, when you hit your calculator, obviously you can't get the correct answer. Okay, so the angle is the big one. Okay, making sure you get the correct one. All right, let's try the next. I'll let you guys read. Plane is flying with a bearing of 300 degrees with a velocity of 500 miles an hour. Because of the wind, the plane has a resultant velocity of 525 miles and a bearing of 305. Find the velocity and bearing of the wind. Okay. Well, what are we given? Well, what's this first one, the bearing and a velocity of 500 miles an hour? Is that the aim, the wind, the ground? That's the aim. Cool. Exactly. That's where we're aiming. And then the resultant velocity of 525 bearing a 305, what's that? That's the true course of the ground. Mm -hmm. We're asked to find the wind, right? Okay. Let's do a quick algebra first, because we have our equation that says, hey, aim plus the wind equals ground. But in this case, what are we looking for? The wind, right? So what's the wind equal to? Ground subtract the aim. We have to do that math on this one. That may, you know, I think it's pretty simple, but we got to make sure we realize that we're subtracting and not adding this time. Okay? And make sure you do the ground minus the aim, not aim minus the ground. 
because you will get two different answers. Cool. I'm going to go after the ground first because I want to do the ground minus the angle. That's kind of so up mine's in purple, so I'm going to go after G. I'm going to draw myself a picture in the true course of the ground. We have a bearing of 305. Three oh five to me goes that way. So here's our three oh five. We need that angle to put into our calculator. What angle did you guys get? 145? Are we okay with 145? Do I need to go through it? Good? Okay, cool. So, my ground. Magnitude? 525, cosine 145, sine 145, calculator, negative 430.055. I know you guys can take that. Right, and then 301, 128.128. Go after the aiming one. I'll draw my picture for the aim. Bearing of 300. Hopefully you drew in the third, second quadrant again. We want that. Hopefully you want one fifty. Need help? Let me know, please. That's the hard part, right there, is finding your angles. You know, the next part's easy. As long as you have the angle correctly. Five hundred.
And we've talked about finding the wind, ground minus mean. Which calculator? Two point nine five seven eight eight fifty one point one two seven six. Let me show you something that I like to do on these, to be honest with you. Okay. When I hit my calculator, typically, you know, if, I, if I'm doing this, a lot of times I do not get these two numbers. I don't hit my calculator yet. What I do is I actually write down what I have the ground and the aim over here on this left side. Okay. And to get this first number, I plug this into my calculator with the subtraction sign between it. I let my calculator do all the work. That gets me that 2.95788. Then I'm even more accurate. I don't get that rounding. And then to get the y coordinate at 51.1276, I just do the y's. And so I'm plugging in my calculator 525 sine 145 minus 500 sine 150. Enter. That's why I like to do mine. Either way, what, what, however you guys want to do it, but make sure you know you show me what's going on if you want on your test so we can see that work, so we can see what angles you're using. So or especially when you're doing this beginning, I gotta see the angle that you're plugging into your calculator, because that's where you're gonna go wrong. Is if you have your angles off. Because typically you don't get the miles per hour off. Because you just copy. Right? But that's what I like. Alright, so now let's see. So now we're gonna do Pythagorean here. So to get the magnitude of the wind. 2.95788 squared plus 51.1276 squared. Fifty-one point. Forget. I lost it. Two miles per hour. Make sure you label it. You guys get the bearing, please. Did I not copy it right? Where's my 81? Oh, it's supposed to be 51. I have a hard time copying that five. Thank you. Where did I get 81 from? There's not even an 81 up there. Thank you, whoever said that. I appreciate it. Those that didn't catch that at home, I had a wrong, I had an 8 right there instead of a 5. I don't know where the 81 came from. I told you it was going to be a rough morning. It happens when you wake up 40 minutes late. Data prime of W, inverse tangent, Y over X, Y is, where did I go, 51.1276, let's copy it correctly, over 2.95788. Theta prime, 86.8. Eight nine. Did I copy that correctly? I hope so. Is that our answer? 
Nope, that's the calculator answer. We need to draw a picture. Where's that angle? Remember that one's from your calculator, so that's your trig angle. So that's that first quadrant one. Mm -hmm. so that's something like almost 90, right? It's something like that. That's the 89, or I'm sorry, 86. What angle do we want? Yeah, we want that little one in there, right? We want this one sitting right there. So to get that bearing or that true course, to get that one, I'm going to do 90 minus theta prime. So my bare angle of the wind, 90 minus is 86.7, so what's that, 3.3 degrees. Good. Questions there. Awesome. Your turn. Now that you read this, before you get too far into it, did you read that the wind is blowing from a bearing of 135? Make sure you see that word from there. Just so we're all on the same page, what are we trying to find in this case? The aim, the wind, or the true course? We're looking for the aim, aren't we? Right, so to get the aim, how are we going to get that? We're going to do true course or the ground speed, the ground minus the wind. Okay. You have to be real careful with the wind. So when I draw my picture for the wind, this is my thoughts. Before you, I want to make sure you guys have this correct. Make sure you have this angle correct. And I'll stop talking for a little bit. Okay, it says the wind is blowing from 135. So I have to think about where 135 is. I'm bearing a 135 for my wind. And that's where it's blowing from. So my first thought is, okay, well, where's 135? Well, 135 for me is going to be down in that direction. But it's blowing from 135. 
So which way is it going? Up into the second quadrant, isn't it? So my wind is pushing my plane back. And make sure you use that green vector, not the 135 vector, because it says that's where it's blowing from. So it's blowing from the fourth quadrant into the second quadrant. Because of that word from. Okay. So. If I think about this one, oops, there's a 135, so this angle right in here is 45, which makes that angle right there 45, because of vertical angles, which then makes my trig angle 135. This is the only time, unfortunately, we actually, Mr. Hill and I were talking about this morning, we want to change this problem. This is the only time where the course and the trig angle are exactly the same. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Let's hit the rewind button real quick. Uh, let's, do, let's just do this. Let's start over. Okay. It is confusing. I agree. For my wind. The question says my bearing. The wind is blowing from 135. So when I think about 135, 135 is down here. That's where the wind is coming from. So it's coming from the fourth quadrant. Where is it going to? So that's what the wind pushes your plane, where it goes to. Yes, just like we talked about before when we first started. If my wind is blowing from the north, where is it going? South, right? 180 degrees. Right? If it's blowing from the east, it's going to the west. Typically, it blows from the west to the east. Okay? So it's just 100. I can square it over. If I'm coming from something, I'm going to the 180 degrees to the opposite. Okay? Good? That's the hard part about this one is reading that word from and making sure you get that number in. That was, uh, we got a 45 here. That was 135. We wanted that one. Which turns out to be 135. Okay. So I got my vector that I'm aiming at to be negative 194.822. 350.383, then when I get, when I find the magnitude, I will net, since I know when I square a negative, I'm going to get a positive, I drop this negative on that 194. In my calculator, I just hit 194.822 squared. And then 350.383 squared. Because when I know I square a negative, I get a positive, so I don't worry about putting them in my calculator. It's less keystrokes, it's less time that I can be off in my calculator. So I get a 400.9 miles per hour. That's my magnitude of where I need to aim. And now let's get our direction. This is the trickier one. Okay, so if I'm going to find my direction, First of all, I don't think it's too terribly tricky finding the angle. 
theta prime of where I'm tangent, inverse tangent, y over x, 350.383 over 194.822. I'll drop that negative also. And that gives me uh, 60.9. Now for the trickier part. That's the reference angle. So I'm going to draw my picture. So when I draw my picture, the first thing I go and I look to see where my vector is located. What quadrant are you putting that vector in? Oh, left and up. So quadrant two. Then I got to figure out what angle did I just find on my calculator, that 60.9. It's my reference angle. That's always between the x-axis and the terminal side. That was the definition we got back in October. Now I got to find out what angle do I want. I want the bearing angle or the navigation angle. I want the angle from the north all the way around. So that angle is what? 91.8270 plus 60.9. 330.9, would you guys agree with me there? Then go. So theta is 330.9. Hey, feeling there? Not bad, huh? Okay. Notice it took us almost an hour, probably an hour, because I probably started five minutes ago, to do three problems when it really came down to it. Take your time on this, okay? How long is the test going to be? 